So I typed a text to this girl I used to see saying that I chose this cutie pie with whom I want to be and I apologize if this message gets you down but then I cc'd all the girls that I'd cc'd around town and I hate to see you frowning but I'd rather see her smiling and wetness all around me true but I'm no island peninsula maybe makes no sense I know crazy give up all this pussycat that's in my lap no looking back spaceships they don't come equipped with rearview mirrors they dip as soon as they can the atmosphere is now ripped I'm so like a pip I'm glad it's night so the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon height jump the broom like the preemie out the womb my partner's yelling too soon don't do it reconsider read some litter sure on the subject you sure man fuck it she it's dark as of sitting and the delight and beautiful and bright as the sun the salt of the earth fire burning and water dripping how could they be using goddess of magic she is timeless the pillow that doesn't need a plug she is the wildest woman and let me say it again for those who need to hear it the black woman is God Let me say it again, the black woman is gone. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe, we'll go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome! Let's get ready to rumble to my versus episode of The Wildest Woman. And who versus whom, do you ask? Well, in the white corner, we have all my beautiful black brothers. And in the red corner, we have all my lovely black ladies. So, you already know what time it is. It is time to call that roll. I need my black community to the center of the mat. It is time to read aloud. God has shown me the future, and my people are free. My people are free! All right, so we doing what we do when we do how we do it, and as you're on your way into this episode, go ahead and do me a favor and like this video. Why? Because if you like it, well, then I love it. So today's content is going to center all around the concept of verses. For whatever reason, it seems like each passing day digs black women and black men into this deeper and deeper, deeper 
and deeper entrenchment of division. <whistles> Thing is, we are a group of people who only take up about 11 to 12 percent of the population of this country, and that number, for various reasons, is dwindling. I don't see how we can afford to be a group of people who are divided against ourselves. Look at you. You're black, you're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. You do right by me. Everything you even think about gonna fail. However, this is exactly the predicament in which we find ourselves. So, on behalf of the Black female delegation, I feel the need to come forward and have somewhat of a discourse, possibly offer an olive branch if I can. Black men and black women, we have reached a fever pitch. There's more tension going on between our community relations than between America and Russia right now. I mean, this situation is getting messier than the Kim and Kanye divorce. Like, I'm tired, you tired, uh -huh. Jesus wept. I know you're tired. Where else can we go from here? Black men have always had an ally in their black women, whether that was your grandma's hands, a black mother, a black sister, wives, daughters. I know from personal firsthand experience that the matriarchy, you know, black women have run this community and stood shoulder to shoulder with their men, especially in the 60s and 70s, when we had strong black male leadership that could organize the community. 60% of mostly all of these organizations were led by women. And now we stand in a place where 70% of the black households are being led by women. I would think that you would want your women to be your greatest resource, that regardless of your relationship with or to them, you would want to project a united front to the rest of the world. Oliver, these people are my clients. You are messing with my business. I have the food editor from the post out there. I mean, it's just in our best interest when you consider what a small fraction of the population we are when you consider how few resources we own and control. You know, that has to be the goal. But if it is verses that you want, it is verses that you get. When a couple starts keeping score, there is no winning. It's only degrees of losing. And if we look around, which I'm a huge proponent of the fact that what's going on in social media is not exactly indicative of the real world, whatever that is. However, I have seen a lot of misogyny coming forward in our community. And here's the thing. We live in America, which is a patriarchy. But you have to understand at this point that whenever you create a division, whenever you create a versus, people will pick sides. And historically, based on the contribution, I'm not sure how many people are going to be on your side. Let's be honest. Having non-black and white women on your side is a great prospect. I, uh, I've said it before and I will say it again. Over and over and over again. I would love to give every black man who wants a white woman his very own. If I could, I'd give them two. However, when we start talking about powernomics, this is not going to be where the seat of our black nationalist power is going to lie. It's not going to lie in the alliances that we've created with other races. That's not how other races show their independence, power, and authority. So I don't know what makes us think in this country we're going to move top down. The problem is that African culture has always been 
a matriarchy. We're trying to embrace something that goes against our natural principles. And I find it so weird that you have so many men who talk about how polygamy is this African principle, despite the fact that it's actually not, it's an economic principle. And when it makes economic sense for a man to have more than one wife, when it takes a needy, vulnerable, maybe woman and children out of the equation of being a burden on the national welfare system, then polygamy is explored. It's a way to secure the financial future of women and children, not a way to have a bunch of random women to lay up with that you have no fiduciary responsibility to. It's not the Nick Cannon situation. This is, that's not polygamy. That's polyamory, maybe but definitely not polygamy. Also, you dig, the bitches I run are selected to win. It's time for us to organize our community around the principles that make sense for us. If the females are outperforming males economically, educationally, socially, politically, I think that we need to be in league with each other instead of on platforms. And, you know, a lot of people think this is a social media thing, but the new uh, head coach got up on a press conference and out of all the accomplishments that he had made as a man, he wanted to list him having a white wife is being one of the things he was most proud of. And he didn't just call her a good wife. He made it a point to make it about their race. So it's not like it's us leading with this. This is y'all's thing. This is what y'all want the world to know is that your goal has been to infiltrate white culture, society, and economics. And now that you have done that on some level, I guess, like, We've infiltrated it, but we don't really own anything. So that's the only reason why I'm reluctant to like categorize the things that we've managed to accomplish as really being anything significant. Because what has it really done for us on a community standard? We're still dead last in the middle class, let alone even talking about the upper wealth in this country. I mean, we're, we're, we're neck and neck with Hispanics and they're going to overtake us because they what work together. So this concept of versus, like we do it with everything. We do it with our music because resources in the black community are so scarce. Everything is a competition, what some would call the crabs in a barrel. But I'm going to tell you, The first will be last and the last will be first. So the only thing that you do to your women when you try to press them down into subjection and submission under you is elevate their status. That's exactly what white people did to you when they pressed you down and oppressed you. You know, that's the reason why we're the leaders of so many industries athletics, all those things were forged from the hardships that we endured in this country. Now that we live in comfort, <laughs> the last NBA draft was all biracials and whites. Now that oppression has been lifted, we're literally turning on each other just to be able to get our misogyny and racism and sexism fixed. We're turning to colorism now as the new racism. We're turning to sexism and misogyny as being the new oppression. Like, We've already seen this doesn't work. It hasn't worked for white people all those years of oppression. And at a certain point, no matter how tightly you close the hand, it has to be open. Let my people go. The slaves are mine. Their lives are mine. All that they own is mine. The slaves came out of Egypt in Exodus. Slaves came out of slavery in this country. You're not going to be able to win in a versus against your women. I mean, now, this isn't a competition. And as everyone knows, this isn't a competition, but. <laughs> At least it doesn't have to be. But if it was, woo, 
I don't think this is a fight that you can win. You're less than 6% of the population. And I mean, women, we're not doing much better. Don't get me wrong. For all of the great accomplishments that black women are making, they're showing you that you can do it against the odds. So you can follow suit or you can fight the power. But while Goldman Sachs are giving black women millions of dollars trying to create a wealth class amongst us, these are efforts that you're going to end up being left out of because you fail to embrace and recognize what everybody else seems to know. I'm watching the gay, trans community, the LGBTQIA-N-D-E-P-E, sorry, the LGBTQIA plus community come to the defense of black women. You know, this is a topic that's beginning to trend on white TikTok, the way that y'all are collectively talking about us. And white people are coming to our defense. And white men, they're like, they're really going strong for the black woman. Everybody else seems to be supportive in our plight against our own men. So I would suggest for the men that really, and I've said it, I say it all the time on my channel, the black woman is God. The future is female. It's going to be us. Like, I don't make the rules. I didn't decide this. But so much oppression has made us the new gifted class. We're going to be the ones. We're the chosen ones. This, this is just where we are. That's why we're experiencing so many gender issues just within our community. Because that type of oppression... That is what comes out when you're chosen. It's just like how Joseph's brothers threw him into a pit, <laughs> sold him into slavery because there was something greater that he had to do. You may not be paying attention to what's going on out here in the atmosphere. They're trying to put black women on the moon. The same black women that helped put white men on the moon. They didn't call y'all. They called us. As we can calculate launch and landing but without this conversion the capsule stays in orbit we can't bring it back home and if you can't see the gift and the resource that you have in your community other people do and other cultures of people are going to end up being the beneficiaries of all the work that black women have put in the talk of mutiny <laughs> is afoot <laughs> it has begun and I have always said I am drawing a line of defending what I believe black womanhood to be and represent. But this isn't something that I want to have to do without the brotherhood. Everything that we've accomplished so far in this country, we did it together. However, this versus, you know, it's for it all. I am the one who found this house. I bought everything in it with my money. It's a lot easier to spend than it is to make it, honey bun. You might not have made it if not for me, sweet cakes. This is not just a bragging rights thing. This is going to determine the future direction of the black community, whether we're going to go fully into the matrix or whether we are going to diverge. And if we are going to diverge, away from our privileged place in this society, we need to know that you have the strength and commitment to lead us out. So many times Moses wanted to quit, turn around, walk away. So many times that they offered Malcolm X money to turn his back on the movement, but these men were steadfast, unmovable, abounding, in the work that they wanted to do for their community. And they are owed better. We're in a patriarchy. So these men are owed better than that, even if you don't think your women deserve it. These men paved the way for you to sit amongst <laughs> your white counterparts and claim preference as a privilege. These were privileges, not rights. And these privileges were extended to you as a result of the work that another man did. And we as black women don't get to stand oftentimes in the work of our men. 
Because when our men climb to the top of the mountain, they want to be surrounded by the people that are on that mountain with them. And that's not a subliminal. I say it straight out. They get up there and want a white woman. So we don't get to stand in the work that our men have done for us. But we have made our own mountains. We have climbed and made our own way. And now you got to decide whether you want to stand on these mountains with us or whether you want this great divide, this valley between us, because we would rather work separately to accomplish divergent goals than to actually work together and lift the whole community out of poverty, out of disparity. I just really feel like y'all don't want that smoke with your own women. I just don't think this is a versus that black men can win. Maybe I'm wrong. Make sure you drop your comments, your opinions. You know, our men aren't the ones that build things anymore, that own things anymore. I don't think it's really a great loss if black women cut their losses right now. But I, I mean, that's not my personal predilection, but there was a time when a woman was called the old ball and chain. And those times, baby, they are a changing. But if we're going to get there together and do this together, like I said, it can't be a competition. It's got to be a cooperation. I would never humiliate you like this. You're not equipped to, honey. We can't get in front of people and not have each other's backs. And I want to see so many more good black men be the voice and the face of the community instead of draping that big, huge, red, long Superman cape around other men. How about you drape that cape around your women, children, and elderly in your community? Instead of caping for other men, how about you cape for your community, for the vulnerable of your community? I want to see more men like the Shumaki way. You got insecurities, you got certain ideas about life and about relationships that's not really healthy. I want to see more men like Seals the Man. You know, it, it's, it's more than words when it comes to supporting people. It takes a lot more than just talk. That are really being a positive image for black men on how to cultivate themselves and build their own self-esteem and worthiness to partner with the type of women they say they want to be with. The type of woman you want to be with is not a race. <laughs> it's the content of your character or whatever it was that they paid Martin Luther King to say. That was what he died for. That was supposed to have been the dream. But somehow we get all the way here in 2022 and we talking about skin colors and hair textures and eye colors and this, this is wild. Like, I feel like we veered off into some sort of alternate reality at some point. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. But we are all going to have to wake up if we're going to find our way back. If we're going to follow the breadcrumbs back to reality, we probably should start now. <laughs> Before we forget who we used to be. All I can do is use my voice as a sounding board, all I can do is use my platform to try to bring us together for all of the harsh indictments that I have for my men and men who know me personally know this to be true. It is honestly out of love. I bring that same energy to women, to children, to white people. <laughs> I bring white people some smoke. I've got some close white friends that I love to death. And it kind of shocked them when they saw some of the things that were coming out on my platform because they were like, uh, bro, you cool with us? Totally cool with y'all. As long as we have equal footing at the table. Same thing with, with my men. As long as you're going to treat me as your equal and respect all of the work that I bring to the table that you asked me to bring to the table. Well, as long as we can respect each other as equals. Not that we do the same thing, but that our contributions hold the same weight. Then by all means, let all the enmity between us disappear. But until you respect my personhood, how can you ask for that from me? But I'm not on my platform to make friends and influence people. I'm on my platform to build a community. You know, it's not personal. 
It really is just business <laughs> for anybody that I've offended and hope to one day. If I missed anybody, <laughs> just wait. Your turn is coming. But behind the scenes of everything that I think is wrong or broken about our community is a heart to see it fixed, to see it better, to see men in their place being supported accurately by women who are protected and provided for enough to provide the support that they need. It's an interdependence. And we can't have one. We can't place the responsibility on the females in our community like as if we live in a matriarchy. Do you want a mom or do you want a wife? These are very simple questions. And once you sit down and answer those, you'll know what you need to do. This is not a competition, but if it was, women would win. Black women in particular would crush our men. Every great movement Everything that we've ever done as a race, as an American people, culture, we had to come together and do it. I saw black women, black men out mobilizing the youth, the elderly to go vote for Joe Biden. So I think if we really decide that we want something together, I mean... Black men are only 6% of the population. Do you really think you can wield that much power without your women? Do you really think that they like you this much? I know it was worth it to sell out their people time and time again, you know, for Sam Cooke, Martin Luther King, you know, Harry Belafonte running around with white women, Sammy Davis Jr., Sidney Poitier, I mean, these were great black leaders who were also deeply entrenched in white privilege, in misogyny. I mean, pick your battles, choose wisely. But for those who are ready to heal our community, build our community, by all means, lift every voice, <laughs> lend your voices. I'm not saying get into Twitter rants and Twitter beefs with these people on this matrix. But what I am saying is make sure that your contribution is felt, that your voice is heard. Even if it's nothing but in the life of a black child, one that may not be your own. Make a mark. Leave a legacy. Get unplugged. Unbothered and unleashed because after all I am still <laughs> your girl Debbie and Nikki your neighborhood wireless woman I look forward to catching you down in the comments make sure you also check my description box I'm going to have the links for the channels that I talked about in this video but until the next time see you in the next episode class is now dismissed but you can't see that i'm empty